Okay, we've all heard that load boxes or attenuators change the way your tube amp sounds, and I always thought that it's by a little bit. Turns out it's by a lot. And just to preface this, not all load boxes are made the same. We have the dynamic or reactive attenuators, like the super expensive Oxbox, and then the more reasonably priced uh, two-note stuff, like the Captor. Then, uh, when you go lower in price, we have these, which are static loads. What does it all mean? Okay, so, uh, simple. When you hook up your guitar amp to your guitar cap, and you drive the speaker hard, it goes in and out, push and pull, and it reaches its limits and it goes back and it increases and then it decreases its resistance. And then the power amp of your tube amp um, drives it harder, softer, harder, softer. It's, it's like a little dance. That's why we say the speaker has an impedance of eight ohms, right? Um, impedance is the combination between resistance and reaction, reactivity, something like that. So it's kind of sort of around 8 ohms, but not exactly is my point. And this little dance happens within fractions of a second, with every little scrape, every little note you hit. That's why we love the dynamics we can feel from our tube amps. It comes from the power amp. Now, when you hook up one of these, they have a very heavy duty static resistor inside, so the dance is gone. How much does that affect tone? Well, I just set up a test which blew my mind. Okay, don't skip this part. I know it's kind of annoying when reviewers talk about recording chains and I always skip it, but you need to understand exactly how I set up this test. So I have this Behringer DI box. Pretty awesome piece of gear, pretty old by now, still works. So I have the input and a direct out. This means I plug the tar head in here and this goes to the load. To the attenuator and then to the speaker, right? On this side I have the XLR out which goes into the console to record. My point is, I am grabbing the signal from the amp before it even hits the load. We will get to record exactly how the power amp reacts when it has a static load connected to it and then how it changes when it has a dynamic load connected to it. Savvy? Okay, welcome to the desk view. Now what's going on here? I have a simple DI track Right, nothing fancy, just a few chugs, a few chords, some minor soloing. This is being fed into the tube amp, and then from the tube amp I'm getting the signal back as distortion, and with the attenuator on, this is what it sounds like. Not too bad, right? I have an impulse on that, it's a Mesa cab with just a 57 mic, I'm not trying to be fancy, I'm just looking for the differences in sound. With that said, it's time to take the attenuator off and record the full power of my tube amp. May my neighbors have mercy on me. Okay, we're back and boy was that a trip. Anyway, we now have the recordings. Now the very, don't, don't look at these, I, I, I'll get to them later. Now the very first thing I notice Here's the non-attenuated recording, and here's the one with the attenuator on. This one is much quieter. Now, I'm not stupid, let me remind you. I am grabbing these recordings before the signal even hits the attenuator. So this is basically the power amp already reacting to the load and being much more silent. Well, let's hear how it sounds, shall we? Attenuated? non-attenuated. So much more sparkle, so much more dynamics. Okay, let me bring this one up. Seems about right. Again, attenuated.
Wow, right? Okay, so the non-attenuated uh, in comparison may sound a bit scooped, uh, but you know, I've been I've been EQing this amp uh, to offset what apparently is the attenuator adding a lot of spongy mids, um, a lot of low end thump that I had no idea how to get rid of, and I was like. It's so a 5153, why can't I get modern metal tones out of it? Well, hmm, hmm. Okay, let's move on to some uh, open chords type stuff and hear them ring out. So much more presence, it's just, it just sings at you. That is a massive difference in sound, and I always thought it's gonna be tiny, tiny! Okay, a short solo. You can hear it as well, right? I'm not insane. Okay, and just for fun, I thought, uh, why not? Take the preamp out from the 5153, record that and see if the preamp can sound better than the attenuated signal. So here's the preamp recording and this is the attenuated. I need to bring the preamp up some decibels. Wow, uh, just visually looking at it, uh, you can see that we still have some dynamics in the attenuated recording. but absolutely no dynamics from the preamp itself so let's listen attenuated first okay so they sound very very similar Again, using the power amp, with, even if it's attenuated, does add a bit more dynamics. But all in all, they both kind of sound like a, a distortion pedal. This attenuator turned my expensive uh, tube amp into a, a, a distortion pedal. Okay, I'm just gonna chop these up and give you a quick comparison. Okay, uh, it's not perfect, but uh, here we go. So attenuated, not attenuated, preamp. I had no idea. I hope you had no idea too, and now you learned something. Wow, right? So, what does this mean to you? Well, a few different things. For one, um, the new mini heads, they're very popular now in 2024, right? Uh, I don't want to rag on PV, but you know, PV, 6505 mini head, invective mini head, we have the EVH, LBXs, um, angles, and so all of that. And all of them, or most of them, have some sort of power sulk, right? You can dial them from full power to half power to like one watt, maybe completely off. Now, they typically don't have the room inside or the budget to have a dynamic power sulk in them. You can rest assured that if not all, most of these have a static load inside. And that's interesting because this all started when I was watching reviews on the 6505 mini head. I was watching a review by YouTuber Kyle Bull, who makes amazing content. 
and he was reviewing the 6505 mini head and he said I don't like the way this sounds when the power soak is engaged I only play it at the full 20 watts and I was like that's weird wow and then I watched a teardown of the 6505 mini head and the guy that was tearing it out pointed out uh, the resistor he said this is a heavy duty ceramic resistor for the uh, load it's probably not going to sound good and I was like why why well that's why I made this test and now I understand why okay a second point if you're a tube connoisseur and you like to just have a trophy amp in the house but you know you can't play it for more than 15 minutes a week right so maybe uh, you're thinking about getting a cheap load box uh, it is my opinion that instead of using this it's much better to just have the volume at 0.5 on your tube amp it's gonna sound like ass but not that much ass right? or alternatively uh, consider buying a dynamic load box I definitely want to get myself a torpedo captor now eh. send me money and third if you're a guitarist who just wants to get amazing tone and you have it drilled into your head that you need a tube amp in 2024 not really tube amps have become impractical you've got nowhere to play them you've got nowhere to carry them um, not many stages uh, can accommodate you and you know festivals where you go on stage to just play five or six songs or a thing and what are you gonna carry like a full stack there here's my take um, unless you're a tube snob uh, and you absolutely want to have one that's completely fine I have one but unless you're that spend your money on a line 6 helix these sound so good and this is not not an ad for line 6 I, I used to hate line 6 but I've heard enough helixes now that I'm like holy a helix an FRFR cab or if you want to go uh, a classic way just a helix then buy yourself separate power amp there are tiny ones that sound pretty transparent and then the cap and there you go you have the helix for mobility and then when you absolutely need your own sound and power you can have a powered cap that's weird man my my rant about attenuators just turned into a huge line 6 commercial i don't even own a helix line 6 hook me up thanks for watching bye